Hello and welcome everybody to the finals of the beginning. Yes, this is the grand finals. So if this is your first video that you're clicking onto, you have clicked onto the wrong one. Go back. We have done two quarterfinals, both of the semifinals, and this being the grand finals. It is Cow Cow versus the kids one or the kid. I I'm sick of it at this point. Um, the kid sticking with his Kirby, but Kao Kao changing to a character we haven't seen from him before, changing to his um, Corrin. In the last game, you might remember he was Dr. Mario and he put on a great performance with said Dr. Mario. Hopefully his uh, Corrin is going to put on an equally as good a performance. And right off the bat, he is absolutely taking it to this Kirby. Already over 110% with Corrin underneath 50. If Cow Cow is able to take the stock, which it looks like he might just be able to do, he will. The uppy is not enough to save Kirby. Cow Corrin is able to take this stock off of Kirby so early. So if he's able to pull in a little bit of um, extra credit, maybe get some more hits in, it is all looking in Corrin's favour. Also, it might be interesting to note that I don't believe either of these uh, players have dropped a set so far in this tournament. Both of these people are on the, uh, as we meet in the uh, in the grand finals. And is that going to be? It isn't. I thought I seen Kirby fly off into the background with after the up air, but it wasn't quite enough as the forward air comes into play. That forward air from Kirby is just so good, but the dash attack is even better because it's able to get the stuff on Corrin at around 99%, which is surprisingly low for a dash attack, I think. I would have thought it would have had to be in a 100 range, 150 range maybe, for a dash attack to work, but hmm, who knows. Either way, Kirby is going into the last stock of this with such an advantage, uh, being that he isn't on his last stock. Oh, and the fire hammer, hammer, I was gonna say hammer, I was gonna say mallet, then I said hammer, so I'm gonna stick with it. The fire hammer, just missing, but Corrin's forward smash is not going to suffer the same fate. It's going to connect, bringing this to an even finish. Corrin just doing a great job of not letting Kirby find his feet, even with the, uh, the counter, just not letting Kirby fall back onto the stage, because once Kirby gets his bearings like what he seems to have, he's able to take control of the stage and just dominate. It is going to be key for Kirby to keep his feet on the ground and to just basically to not be in a state where you're juggled above your opponent. I know it's the same for everybody, but for Kirby especially right now because of how deep into this game it is, I'm only realising that it is not equal stocks going into this. Cow has two stocks, Kirby only has one. I don't know what possessed me to think that it was an even stock finish. Kirby is on his last stock, while Corrin still has two. And that is going to be enough to clinch the victory and a very emphatic victory as well for Cow, taking the two stocks to nil. Moving on to the second game of the grand finals, and it's a, this is an important one for Kirby because if it comes to a stage where it's 2 0 going into the finals and Cow has all of the momentum. It's gonna go from a situation where Kirby has never been beaten before in this tournament to be beaten three in a row, and you never really want to go three out trio in the grand finals. Big props to both of these guys because they are very, very evenly matched. It is a, a spectacle to watch. Smash, Smash Bros. When it's played well, like it's currently being right now, and it has been throughout this entire tournament. When it's being played well, it's such a great sport to watch and commentate over, and I'm such. I'm so honoured basically to be able to hold this tournament with my pals over at WSSB and to be able to bring this tournament with you. We do want to do more of these in the future, so if you're interested in being in one of these tournaments and being featured on the YouTube channel, get in touch with us. We'd be more than happy to uh, to hear from you and feature you in the next tournament. But anyway, back into this match, we are deep into the first stock. Both characters knocking around the 100 and something range, um, and it is getting to a stage now where whoever lands the next big attack is more than likely going to be the victor, and that is exactly 
what Kirby just did. A big attack is what was needed, and his, there's nothing bigger than a hundred uh, pound, whatever it was. I didn't read it. Number a hundred pound uh, weight falling on top of you. Kao seems to be learning from uh, the mistakes Ramen had made in the last game, knowing when Kirby's going to do that upbeat and moving away from it when it is time to do so, so he doesn't get caught by the, uh, the downplay on Kirby's upbeat. Catch Kirby. Oh, but the, uh, what? I think it's a forward tilt. I'm, I'm, I'm banking on that being a forward tilt because I've said it like five times already. But the forward tilt is going to be enough to catch Corrin and take him out for his last stuck. It is almost looking like a reverse of the last game. If Kirby is able to get this victory right now, it will be two stocks to nil, and that is the exact reverse of what happened in game one. Kirby doing a great job of just putting on small bits of damage, bringing it up to a point where when he comes back in fresh, all he has to do is land those two pivotal hits, maybe even one if he gets it up to a high enough percentage. Unfortunately for him, unable to get the tech off the side of the stage, and the platform will put him down to the bottom blast zone. But he has done a whole lot of work for himself in his last stock to make it so that he doesn't have to do all that much right now. Karin is on, after this, 113 percentage. And the fire hammer, hammer. I keep on going to see mallet. The fire mallet misses, but the forward air does not. And a zero to death is what's going to take Cow to his first loss in this series. So here we go with game three. Neither character, as you see has switched out, both are sticking with uh, their initial picks, both with Kao with Corrin and the kid with his Kirby. Both games so far in this series have been, I, I'm saying series, it's a, it's a, it's a best of five, but fuck, I'm gonna call it a series, it's so much more professional. <laughs> both games so far in this series have been top notch gameplay. It is a spectacle to watch, so I'm very excited for these next two games. Whichever way they go, whoever wins this tournament 100% deserves it because these are some great games they are putting on for our viewing pleasure. And it is reflected by just how close this is. Funnily enough, I don't believe Kirby has actually landed a fire mallet, but fair play to him for, uh, for keeping on trying. I guess the one time it does land will be the time when it gets him to stock because we are at that percentage right now. It is kill percent time. Whoever lands the next big attack is going to have a huge advantage going into this match, and that advantage goes to Cow with his Corrin. Being able to take her stock off of Kirby, but a huge, huge response back and not allowing Cow to get any hits on him, keeping that 0% and, and stalking, not stalking, camping out at the ledge until Corrin's invincibility goes away. Very intelligent would be the word to describe the play going on here. Both characters are getting reads on each other, knowing what each other is going to try to do. Maybe it's a standard enough play to camp at the ledge until your opponent's invisibility goes away. I just think it's very clever. And as I said a couple of minutes ago, whenever the fire mallet stamps, stamps, lands, I, words are tough. Whenever the fire mallet lands, it's going to be the stock. And funnily enough, that is exactly what happened as the fire mallet was enough to take the stock off of Kel with his Corrin. At a very early percent as well, I haven't even mentioned that. Kirby at 33% already got the stock off of Corrin. And they are playing a dangerous game off the stage right now. Both characters have very decent uh, aerial mobility, so it shouldn't be too tough for them. But just with every hit Corrin takes, it is just looking more and more in Kirby's favour. And as you see right there, that he was the death of himself. He was not able to make it back up onto the stage, meaning that Kirby goes into game three with the advantage. Three, two, one, go! 
Okay, so you will have to excuse me. I said Kirby's going into game three with the advantage. I did mean going into game four with the advantage. But as you can clearly see, Cow switching out his Corrin for his Dr. Mario. Maybe he's a little bit more confident in his Dr. Mario. And as we've seen against his his first game in the quarterfinals or semifinals, whichever one I can't entirely remember. That is proven to be true, he has a very good Dr. Mario, so maybe it is what he needs to bring this into a Game 5 situation and maybe take the title for himself. But regardless of that fact, if Kirby is able to take this game right now, he is the winner of this tournament. The first tournament held by WSSB and SSBA together. First of many, hopefully, because this did go very well and we would love to hold more in the future. But all of that is outside the game, and we are inside the game right now. It is f first stock has yet to be taken, but it is deep into it. Both characters in and around the 100 zone, and Kirby is going to fall victim to the first stock being gone. Cow showing that his Dr. Mario is to be feared and not to be taken, taken very lightly. And it might be a very smart time to switch it up right now because they've already played three games against each other so any downloads to be had have already been done. Kirby catching Dr. Mario there, back air it seemed, taking the suck off of him. But as I was saying, any downloads that were to be done have already been done. So Kirby knows how his current plays and vice versa. So it is very smart for Kyle to switch out into Dr. Mario in this pivotal game because he doesn't know what to expect. Because uh, the kid doesn't know what to expect, excuse me. Oh, catching with the upper, but unfortunately not able to get the down part of it. Gets the down part of it right now. And just goes back into the forwarders and the fire mount. Still just missing with that down B. It's always very dangerous trying to hit that down B off the side. You either catch with it, or somebody can, like... It, you either catch with the down B at the side like that, or you go so far underneath the stage that it is very plausible for your opponent to just jump down and take full advantage of you when you're there. Such a close game. Both people know how important this game is. Cow doesn't want to lose this because he honestly cannot afford to lose this. But the kids also know because it's the final game for him. All he needs to do is win. Dr. Mark going for the risky up in my opinion, there was a sizable gap between them. And that is one good thing about Dr. Mario, if he keeps a hold of his jump while he's off the stage, his aerial mobility is really good. And that is going to clinch the second stock for Kirby, bringing it into a situation now where he just has one more job to do, and that job is the last stock. If he's able to take that last stock, he's able to take the victory. Dr. Mario is not going down with a fight though, and he is not making it easy for the kid. Oh, such a risky play, but good lord, that would have been impressive had that connected. Jumping with the fire melon off stage. The headbutt going to hit the shield off of Kirby, and both characters now are in kill percentages. Unfortunately for Cow, he is a whole stock down, and that's going to be the difference because. Oh, never mind! Both characters now on their last stock. Playing off the stage, it is so dangerous for both people. One mistake, one misinput off stage, and it's a complete new landscape. It's either going into a game five or the tournament is over. playing so so safe right now he knows how high his percentage is he knows that one good hit is enough to seal the victory for the kid just keeping his distance using those pills to just space kirby out oh and the up smash is going to be enough to take the victory for the kid s1 and to claim the title of champion in this tournament I'd like to say a special thank you to everybody who took part, all 41 guys who came out and played in this um, this event. It was the first one that we've ever done, but it will not be the last. We had a, a huge, we had a lot of fun. 
doing this i had a lot of fun recording editing and doing the commentary so thank you all for listening and for watching if you'd like to be involved um there are details are in the description to get in touch with us we have our discord or twitter um but yeah if you'd like to get involved hit us up there and until next time i will talk to you all then a huge congratulations to the kid s1 or the kids one i have no idea and i will talk to you all next time peace Let's <laughs> go.